They had probably the most dangerous missions in the USAF and were the first into an air attack and the last out, and had a greater number of losses during the early part of the Vietnam War for their squadron size than any others. But they developed a technique to destroy the biggest threat to airborne attacks, namely radar-guided surface-to-air missiles and anti-aircraft fire. This is the story of the men and machines that made up the wild weasels, and the deadly game of cat and mouse they fought with the missile ground crews, and how nearly 60 years on, they still have an invaluable role to play in modern warfare. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. The story of the Wild Weasel starts in 1965 with Operation Rolling Thunder. This was America's attempt to persuade the North Vietnamese to stop supporting the communist Viet Cong in the South by introducing a sustained aerial bombing campaign against North Vietnam, targeting its industry, transport and air defences. This was built on the existing bombing raids of the Ho Chi Minh Trail, a network of trails and paths which North Vietnam used to supply the Viet Cong insurgency in the South. Operation Rolling Thunder was meant to last for just eight weeks, but ended up running for over three and a half years. And while the North Vietnamese had only a small air force of MiGs supplied by the Soviets, it made up for this by creating one of the toughest air defense systems in the world. At the beginning of the operation, the North had over 1,500 anti-aircraft guns, but within a year, this had increased to over 5,000, which ranged from rapid fire 23 mm up to 100 mm radar guided artillery. These had a range of over 15,000 feet and were positioned across the country and close to the border with Laos, a neighboring country which the US overflew en route from their bases in Thailand to North Vietnam. But the weapon that made the biggest impact was the Soviet S-75, known in the West as the SA-2 Guideline Surface-to-Air Missile, or SAM, and the Fan Song, the NATO name for the SA-2's fire control and tracking radar. Although they could only track one target at a time, they could guide up to three SA-2 missiles at once to it. This was the same as the one used to shoot down the US pilot Gary Powers in the U-2 spy plane over Russia in 1960 at a height of 60,000 feet. In the beginning, the USAF used tactics more akin to fighting a nuclear war with the Soviets than a conventional war with the Vietnamese by flying high and out of the range of anti-aircraft guns. However, when SAMs were deployed from July 1965, the situation changed when one SA-2 missile exploded in the middle of a Phantom Four strike force group, bringing down one aircraft and damaging the rest. US bombers were then forced to fly at below 10,000 feet and under the SAM's operational height. This became a deadly trap because if they flew high, they were the target of the SAMs, and if they flew low, they became the target of anti-aircraft fire. The North soon had about 25 SAM battalions, with six launchers each, and moved around about 150 sites across the country. And the Soviets also supplied an early warning radar system, which was deployed at over 200 sites. Losses to SAM attacks increased, and something had to be done to neutralize them. Trouble was, no one had attempted anything like this before, so the tactics were more or less created as they went along. This would become the first time where electronic detection was used to actively go out and look for radar and missile sites during their hunter-killer missions rather than attacking predetermined targets, something that today is known as SEED or Suppression of Enemy Air Defences. In 1965, a highly classified volunteer squadron called the Wild Weasels was formed. This used the two-seater version of the F-100 Super Sabre aircraft, which was outfitted with specialist electronic equipment to detect the direction of a radar signal so they could be located. Normally, this would require a large receiver dish, too big for a fighter. Instead, they used four small dishes to pick up when a radar was activated and the direction it was coming from. The name, Wild Weasel, refers to an animal which goes into the lair of its prey to kill it, and the YGBSM initials on the patch 
is the abbreviated version of a comment made by an experienced B-52 electronic warfare officer, Jack Donovan, when he was told what the missions entailed. The full version you can see here, but the shortened version is, you gotta be shitting me, which became part of their patch and a sort of unofficial motto. In the front of the F-100 was a seasoned pilot and in the rear was the EWO or the electronic warfare officer, whose job was to operate the radar detection and tracking equipment. The usual weasel formation would be to have one F-100 as the lead detection aircraft with four F-105 Thunder Chiefs which were fast and carried a greater munitions load of rockets, bombs or both and some were outfitted with Gatling guns capable of 6,000 rounds per minute. The F-100 weasel would fly ahead using the hills and valleys to aggressively bait the heavily camouflaged mobile SAM sites into targeting them with their radar. Once the radar was switched on, its approximate direction could be determined, but they didn't know the distance, so they would then fly high and wait for a missile to launch, which they would then have to dodge, but the missile's smoke trail would show the site's exact location. The F-100s not only found the SAM sites, but also attacked them with cannon, rockets and initially napalm, though that was later discontinued. They also would often face heavy anti-aircraft fire and sometimes MIG attacks, and the more heavily armed F-105s would follow to attack the rest of the site. Doing this, they would attempt to clear the area of any air defences so that other aircraft could proceed to and from their targets unimpeded, so the weasels would be the first in and the last out to ensure their safe return. Within the first two weeks of their operation, the results were poor, with no SAM kills, one plane lost, one crew member killed and one captured. But once they got their teamwork together and their first SAM kill, their confidence grew and more kills followed. The program which was on the edge of cancellation was continued and enhanced. However, these were one of the most dangerous types of missions in the Air Force. And after six weeks, just one F-100 remained. And from the original 16 crew, four were dead, two captured, three wounded, and two quit. The problem with the F-100 was that they didn't have the performance of the F-105 which accompanied them, and were often caught by anti-aircraft guns as they attacked the site. They also had to outfly sometimes multiple missiles traveling up to Mach 3, so if they couldn't pull a snap turn in time, the missile would get them. But their actions did affect the SAM operators, because they began to realize that if they turned their radar on, they could have a weasel flying down the beam. After talks with the Pentagon about the F-100's lack of performance, the weasels were upgraded with 12 two-seat versions of the F-105s, which were also given the AGM-45 Shrike anti-radiation missile, which was designed to home in on the radar signals. But for the crews, they were still trying to determine the best techniques to use, and six weeks after the first F-105s reached the airbase in Thailand, just one aircraft was left. Poor weather and cloud cover in the rainy season, which lasted for up to eight months of the year, also made it difficult to see a missile launch until it was too late, which brought down several of the new weasels. This learning curve applied to both sides. The North Vietnamese started launching coordinated missile attacks from two or three different sites at once, making it difficult for the weasels to avoid all the missiles which were suddenly converging upon them. The Soviets modified the SAM missiles to lock onto the jamming signal which US bombers used to blind the SAM radar and home in on the source of the jammer itself. This also allowed the tracking radar to be turned off, so if there was a Shrike missile on its way, it couldn't home in on them. Another technique was to point the radar off to one side and then turn it off. Again, if a Shrike was on its way, it would lose the signal and crash away from the site. Faking a missile launch by activating the missile guidance signal but without actually firing a missile could trick a weasel into thinking a missile was being launched at them and getting them to pull up or drop their bombs early to make the aircraft lighter to dodge this non-existent missile. Once the missile sites had fired their missiles, they would then immediately move on to a new location to avoid the follow-up bombing. 
According to Soviet advisors, the average SAM unit could destroy five to six US aircraft before being put out of action. Now, whilst the Shrike missile could home in on the SAM's radar, their range was about half that of the SAM missile. The Weasels discovered that if they launched their Shrikes upwards at about a 45 degree angle towards the target, the ballistic path would give them the extra range and they could keep out of the range of the SAMs. The Americans also modified the Weasel's electronics to get not only the distance to the radar, but also to know if the individual aircraft was the target of the tracking radar, and if so, to take the appropriate action. In 1967, the Weasels got the new AGM-78 anti-radiation missiles with longer range, bigger warhead, and better guidance. This allowed them to fire from a standoff distance of up to 30 miles away. It also included a simple memory circuit, so even if the radar was switched off, it would continue to the target. Now the number of kills went up as the losses went down, and by 1969 the Weasels had destroyed 97 SAM sites. As the war dragged on, in 1972 Operation Linebacker created the largest aerial attack since World War II with over 350 aircraft in the air during missions, including B-52 bombers, tankers, fighters and weasels. But by then the F-105s were getting old and a newer aircraft, the F-4G Phantom, was added to the weasel units. The North Vietnamese had also developed some new tricks to combat them. They changed the frequency of the radar so the weasel's equipment could no longer pick them up and they started launching their missiles in the general direction of the target, usually the B-52s, and then turned on the radar at the last moment to get a target lock, giving the weasels very little time to find the missile sites. This proved very effective as there was little the weasels could do about it. But soon a change in tactics saw the B-52s intensively target the SAM sites, and with better electronic countermeasures, the North Vietnamese started to run out of missiles to fire against them, which brought them to the negotiating table and an eventual ceasefire. According to the Vietnamese, approximately 6,800 SA-2 missiles were fired during the Vietnam War, accounting for 31% of US losses, but the Fan Song radar-guided AAA fire is thought to have accounted for 60% of US losses and 9% to MiG fighters. The Weasels had shown that SAMs could be countered and defeated, but more work would be needed to match the increasing capabilities of the new Soviet missile systems. By the mid-1970s, the Phantom F-4G Wild Weasels were fitted with the APR-38, a new digital warning and homing system. Now, new threats like changes to radar frequencies could be dealt with by a software update rather than a major hardware change. The APR-38 was the most complex system ever to go into a fighter at the time, but it was far from perfect and took a lot of time and money to get right, but it was eventually used in the Yom Kippur War between Israel and Egypt. The Wild Weasels, along with the upgraded AN-APR-47 Phantom F-4Gs, went on to see action in Operation Desert Storm in 1991 with great success and the loss of only one aircraft which was caused by the hang firing of an ARM-88 missile. The Weasel's role is now assigned to the F-16 Fighting Falcon, though the F-35 Lightning II, with its much greater stealth capabilities and ability to take even larger weapons internally than the F-22, is slated to take the role as the F-16s are phased out. SEED, or the suppression of enemy air defences, is now an essential component of modern warfare and can account for up to 30% of all missile attacks in the first week of a campaign. But without the bravery of the weasel crews to fly into the face of death in the first place, none of this would have been possible. In many ways, the battle between the Weasels and the radar crews was also a technical battle between the Soviet engineers that created the radar and SAMs and the US engineers that created the Weasels detection equipment and the armed missiles, with each iteration trying to leap ahead of the other. Now, our sponsors of this video, Brilliant, can help you understand the skills required, whether you're looking to become an electronic engineer or just understand the principles involved. 
Brilliant is a fun problem solving website and app so you're not tied to the desktop and you can help develop those learning skills anywhere. Research shows that doing problem solving is more effective than watching a lecture. Brilliant's approach is based on this active problem solving and learning method. It's about seeing concepts visually and interacting with them so that you can remember them. Their courses are laid out like a story and broken down into pieces so you can tackle them a little bit at a time. There's no big deal here. There's no tests or grades. If you make a mistake along the way, just check out the explanation to find out more. Brilliant has something for everybody, whether you want to start with the basics of maths, science and computer science, for example, or dive into something like neural networks or quantum computing. So if you want to support Curious Droid and join a community of over 8 million other learners, you can get unlimited access to all of Brilliant's in-depth courses and learning by heading over to brilliant.org forward slash Curious Droid and following the sign up link. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, then don't forget to please thumb up, subscribe, share, ring that bell notification. And I'd also like to say a big thank you to all of our patrons out there for their ongoing support.